congratulations for taking ownership of your financial plan by tuning into the Federal Employee Financial Planning Podcast, hosted by Mason and Associates, financial advisors with over three decades of experience serving you. You will rest easy once your plan is done. You will see clearly just how you have won. Welcome to the Federal Employee Financial Planning Podcast, hosted by Michael Mason. I'm a certified financial planner, and across the table from me, John Mason, also certified financial planner, Tommy Blackburn, CFP and CPA, and Ben Rakes, a certified financial planner and IRS enrolled agent. Uh, this this episode is going to be dual federal employees. So what we've learned, some unique uh, planning opportunities uh, for dual federal employees. We're going to talk about pre-retirement uh, and then post-retirement. So uh, let's just jump right in. Mike, thanks for the intro. Again, I, I'd like to say hi to everybody as well. Thank you to my partners and, and co-hosts for helping us put on this show Two, two quick shout outs as I'm typically the messenger guy. I think I've, I do that part of this podcast. But if you're just tuning in for the first time, we're Mason and Associates. We have over three decades of experience doing this. We're financial planners first, helping change our clients' lives and motivate them and empower them to do things that they wouldn't have done without us. That's what we do. That's our primary job. And we do this content creation second, the podcast, our YouTube channel. So if you're just here for the first time, welcome. Thank you for being with us. For our loyal listeners, thank you for being on this journey with us for over a year now. Um, the mission, the mission, the call to action is go back to the previous episode where we talked about the military survivor benefit open season. Now, it's not necessarily the episode that we released directly before this one, but go back in time, find it. We released it in March. It's the Military Survivor Benefit Open Season. It's an awesome opportunity. That coupled with our YouTube video, you have the opportunity, our audience, to change the lives for veterans and their families throughout the country. And it's our responsibility to do it because national media is not picking it up. This doesn't sell, but we can change the lives together, the Mason and Associates community. So thank you for being here. Um, thank you for supporting us. And thank you to our clients for empowering us um, to do this on this type of medium. Outstanding. Thanks, John. And uh, so as we as we begin today, again, dual federal employees could be FERS, FERS, could be CSRS, FERS. Uh, there won't be many years that we still have CSRS and FERS actively working. So let's make the assumption that it's FERS, FERS, for a little bit. And maybe if you're okay with it, um, this is off the cuff, maybe we can throw in FERS and any other employer that has a pension. So maybe you're FERS and military, or maybe you're FERS and Huntington Ingalls, or FERS and Sentara with a pension, any other place that has a pension that kind of looks and feels like federal, I think some of those same rules are going to apply um, for those folks too. And we'll identify you know, when it's slightly different, right? So... Uh, I wanted to start with health insurance. Uh, if you know, if two federal employees and a family, you know, it seems like, and, and one or more children, it seems like, you know, one of you taking uh, family coverage makes the most sense. Are we talking right now about uh, if you're actively employed? Right. Yeah, I, I think you're spot on. If you if you are. Uh, John and Sarah, and you've got seven kids or three kids or one kid, what you're going to end up doing is one of you is going to take family coverage. You know, there's no reason to have self plus one on one person and then the other person on self only. Um, family coverage would be the route to go while you're both actively employed. And kind of just a side note, which is kind of crazy with insurance, and I don't think it's, it's not the same, I don't think, in the private sector um, always, but one kid or seven kids, family's family, and the premium's a premium. So the more kids you have, the better deal it is. Yeah, and as I look at this uh, before, you know, it's most people take the Blue Cross Blue Shield, and self plus one is like $20 a month less than family. 
You know, so you, you're really getting hammered there for that plus one versus family. Absolutely. John, I think I've had the same thought process. It's like, so, so somebody could be paying the same premium who has a family of three, right? Spouse and a child with somebody who's had like seven kids. And I think the private sector probably depends plan by plan. Um, but sometimes it's the same there too. And it has kind of baffled my mind. It's like, this doesn't seem, doesn't seem right. But The math doesn't seem to work. And and so Mike, and if we, I, do we want to go to like that same couple that's now retired? So while you were both working, it made sense, you know, but now let's say one of you is retired and the person that retired was the one that historically was carrying the health insurance. Yeah. And now, now it's just each of us, right? We, we don't have a family to take care of, but we owe both in our own right, have the option to have our own coverage is, is what you're setting up, Right. Well, I guess it could be twofold, right? So maybe I retired, you know, from DEA. Maybe I was a special agent and retired under those new provisions early, you know, while my other spouse or my spouse is working until 62. If I was carrying the health insurance, it was pre-tax while I was working and maybe now I'm retired and those health insurance premiums aren't pre-tax anymore. So I'd want to switch back to the actively employed person have them be the ones to carry the health insurance, get that tax deduction, and flip it back to them for the family coverage. Absolutely. When we're talking family, you're 100% accurate. Once the family falls off, you know, I don't know that uh, pre-tax uh, self-self, you know, or self plus one pre-tax, you know, with the one that's working, I don't know that that's better than self-self once we don't have the family in- involved. Self-self would... would almost always be the way to go. I don't think we've ever seen it in any other scenario. And Tommy, I just wanted to say, I mean, the timing's not as good now after that question John asked me, but uh, I thought we had a conversation a couple years ago when you joined Mason and Associates and our financial planning with federal employees that when something like this, if you tried to make federal benefits actuarial, uh, it makes it's not sense actuarial, actuarial. <laughs> adjusted. Yeah, I think that was uh, specifically about survivor benefit uh, premiums, and that that was ten percent, no matter what your situation was. Same, you're right. It doesn't always make sense. We've wondered forever how a FERS benefit could could be generated at forty percent of your high three, uh, at point eight percent cost, right? So, right. and so that's just a funny, just a funny. Yeah, you, you're right. And just to give it a little bit more justice, the original comment was that I know John and I were working on a plan and it was like, so you could be, and this, go listen to the military SBP one that we just released or should have released uh, well before this, as well as the survivor benefit one episode two that we did. But um, you could be 90 and your spouse could be 50 and the cost is 10%. Per year, so there's no no actuarial math behind how that's figured out. There you go. And also, and I don't know if you've pulled them up, uh, Tommy. If you haven't, uh, we can give them these episodes uh, as we talk about in-service survivor benefits. You know, for again, dual federal employees. Uh, make sure that whoever you're working with, and if it's yourself, then listen to our other podcast. But if you're working with a financial planner, make sure they understand. What happens if you die in service uh, as a FERS employee or as a CSRS uh, employee? Because some of these income streams, all of it's like life insurance. An income stream for the rest of your life is like life insurance. Uh, Lump sum for in-service FERS uh, death benefits is like life insurance. So you should understand it all. Uh, Yeah, and it looks like, Mike, um, so episode two was survivor benefits. Episode three through seven was where we covered CSRS um, in three and four. And five through seven was where we covered um, FERS. And it looks like in particular, I think, episode six was where we talked about, or maybe that's episode seven. One of those, I know we specifically talked about death benefits on FERS, but if you listen to all those episodes, you should get all the information you want on those topics. Right, and then and then uh, Ben, there's an episode on federal employees group life insurance. You you guys can find that you know on on uh, the podcast. Uh, but just you know, a statement there is that Fegley option B gets really expensive. So you know, don't get it young, and forget that it gets expensive as you get to forty and forty five. And then we also like to manage our TSP contributions, Ben. 
Absolutely. We need to take a look at those TSP contributions. You can either do traditional, which are going to be deducted from your income, or Roth, which are not going to be deducted from your income. What you could look for if you're doing those traditional TSP contributions is keeping your adjusted gross income below those Roth contribution thresholds. So that way, hey, I'm doing a little bit of pre-tax into my TSP, but I'm keeping my income low enough that I'm still able to put money into a Roth IRA through normal contributions. Maybe guys, I, I want to take this a, a different direction. And as we think about dual federal, there's obviously, that just means in my mind, the initial, and I'm sure our audience too, it's like, okay, so we both have great benefits. Like what's unique about both having great benefits? Well, we both have a pension, Awesome. We both have social security. Awesome. We both have TSP. Awesome. Everything's the same. Now there are some nuances like self self and who carries the insurance and whatnot. But as, as we think about the dual federal employee, one of the things that pops into my mind that makes them very unique is maybe they never as a couple need to save 10% because they both have great guaranteed income. So maybe the required savings rate's actually a little bit lower. Um, but more specifically, what enters my mind is the benefit structure around federal employees is so great. They have sick leave, they have annual leave, um, they both have these pensions, they have consistent income where they don't maybe have to have the same level of emergency fund. How much more fun can federal dual federal employees have in their 30s, 40s, and 50s when they realize how lucrative these benefits are and then they can share. Imagine you and your spouse both have 240 hours of annual leave every year and you can go on vacations with your family and you can do all of that compared to somebody that's married to maybe a public school teacher that doesn't get any time off for 10 months or married to another employer where maybe they only get two weeks of vacation a year or has to work on Christmas, you know, and just think about how much more fun your financial plan can be when you're operating under that same kind of like infrastructure or safety net. We've never talked about that before. Like that's so much fun for so much longer. And, and I think we've touched on, and I think I'm going the right direction with you, that we've touched on this before and, and, figuring out what that FERS income is going to be. And you'll make as, as much money, you know, after a 30 to 35 year career, as much money in retirement for the rest of your life as you were making. Uh, but if you don't find that out until five years before retirement, it's not that much fun, is it? If you know, if, you, if you're 10 years into this married to another FERS and you know that if you can afford to retire, you, know, you can afford to die, uh, and you know you only need to save 10% into TSP, and maybe you think about doing uh, high deductible and saving into some HSA to get you some tax-free. But if you know it, and it's on paper there, you avoid so many mistakes over that 20-year period. You avoid whole life insurance that you know is a ridiculous thing to do when survivor benefits is the thing to do. Uh, so I'm 100% on board. You, you're not worried about your children's college you know, because you know, you know, retirement's taken care of, so you can set some money aside for college. So it's a tremendous point you make. Yeah, it's just dual federal employees in general. It's just that security of, and it's different. I, I, I don't know because I'm not married to a federal employee, but I just envision, and I, we've seen it in the financial plans when we work with those folks, the amount of security that they have. You know, having both people under that same system is is almost impossible to replicate. And if we transition that now that conversation into survivor benefits, the last thing we want to do right now on this episode is talk about survivor benefits again. But we have to, because survivor benefits for dual federal employees is one of those things, Mike, where it's like, well, I have a pension and he or she has a pension. So if we both have our pensions, we should both just take that and both decline survivor benefits. What do you think about that logic? Well, I think let's, let's go down that path. So uh, when I die, I'm married to Bobby. Bobby's a, a federal employee. And when I die, my pension's going to die with me. My social security check's going to die. And what if I said, yeah, and TSP goes to zero the minute I die? Well, you'd be up in arms if TSP went to zero. So you, you want Bobby to get TSP, but you're okay 
with your two guaranteed income sources going away. Social security is going to go away, whether it's my social security or hers, only one social security check comes in. So I would say uh, you've got, you make a decision on one source of income and Uncle Sam's already made the decision on the other. So to be clear, you think that that's a bad decision. It's not, it's not a good decision. <laughs> so, so to yeah. be clear, yeah. so Mike Mason's opinion is if you're dual federal employees, you should both have survivor benefits because what makes this unique is dual federal employees, especially if you're FERS, is you both have a FERS pension and you both have social security. And assuming you married somebody that's in a similar status as you, you're making similar pay. I mean, it's not uncommon for us to see two GS-14 Step 10s married to each other, which means their social security is identical, their first pension's identical. So your example of both income streams going away is highly accurate compared to you know, survivor social security for a non-federal employee spouse. So I, I think that your, your statement was amazing. We said this on a previous episode, thrive, not survive. Why all of a sudden, just because we can, do we decline survivor benefits? So now our surviving spouses in survival mode instead of thriving mode, it just doesn't make sense to us. And People ask us, guys, and maybe Tommy and Ben, you can hop in here. Do I need to have it? Do I need to have survivor benefits? Do we both need to have it? I can't not stand the word need. Oh, oh yeah, because honestly, even though I know you may not need it, I want to respond, yes, you need it because you've built a lifestyle and a psychology around these income streams that is pretty freeing. You worked a career to get it and to then just let it go poof. Um, you know, that's going to affect that household, even if they can survive on just what they had. Um, it's no way it doesn't affect them. Now the true, you know, 100% answer there is maybe you don't need it. Maybe you tell us what you're spending, what your needs are, and we can say, yeah, you can do it on, you know, one, one pension income and one social security income, um, and, and your investments. But, why is that what we're planning for when, when we can have such a better picture at a very reasonable cost? I want to go back to something you said earlier, John, when you mentioned the great benefits that these folks have, dual federal employees, great health benefits, they have great pensions, TSP is great as well. Maybe you're someone who doesn't need to max out your TSP every year because you know ahead of time how valuable those pensions are going to be in your retirement. It's something that we say here. I think we even have a podcast episode titled, They're Not Talking to You. If you're a dual federal employee and you're seeing a financial planner or a financial advisor and he's saying, I really need you to max out that TSP each and every single year. That's the only way that you're going to make it in retirement. You need to look at that guy upside down and and I would say leave that office immediately. If they don't know that dual federal pensions are going to be worth millions of dollars to you in your retirement, then they clearly don't know anything about the retirement system that you're in. And you really need to see someone who gives this kind of advice professionally, who knows the benefits that you have. And and John, John, will, John will tell you, I mean, he's, uh, we've had clients come to us that have visited other financial planners that the planner says, you can't retire. You're not putting enough in 401k slash TSP because- they didn't factor in exactly what Ben was just talking about. They didn't factor in the FERS pension. They had no idea. They thought FERS meant federal employee with a thrift savings plan. They had no idea <laughs> that there was you know, a pension involved. So oh, by the way, that, that family, they're both retired now. <laughs> and right. he just retired in February. And he couldn't be happier. I was about to and say, they pro- couldn't be happier. So Probably uh, living the retirement dream everybody wants to live, too. Not, they're not, not scrapping, right? They didn't need that extra million. They've got a, an awesome retirement. And, and to keep going down that path, it's they've got to be thrilled that they're retired now because they know they can retire because they've talked to us. But also think if they would have gotten in touch with us 10 years prior and we said, you know what? Instead of saving money into TSP aggressively, instead of saving into all these other accounts, why don't you take that vacation? Why don't you take your kids to Disney World? Why don't you do that thing that you've been dreaming of? If you're not considering all of these things, particularly looking at two federal employees, uh, you're, you're really doing a disservice to them. 
It almost sounds like another episode we recorded called Know the End in the Beginning, where if you knew the end in the beginning, you probably would have lived life a little differently. Or if you'd talked to a qualified uh, advisor, you you could have made bet- different decisions and enjoyed the ride a little more. Or even something just as simple, guys, as we can both retire at 57 and we both have health insurance, easy peasy, and we don't have to think about it. We don't have to worry about waiting until Medicare. I mean, it's the list goes on and on about how dual federal employees just win big time. And and I wrote this down, which I think is always something important to remind our audience. And, and Mike, maybe you want to speak to this. Need to. Well, no, you probably don't need it. But just because you don't need it doesn't mean you shouldn't have it. And just because you don't need it doesn't mean it's not a good deal. So sometimes, like, you just go get it and you pay for it and you buy it and you and you smile because it was a great investment and it was a good use of your time and your money. Whether you needed it or not, there's a lot of things in our life that we have that we didn't need that we get great enjoyment out of. And survivor benefits provide you great enjoyment. Share with our audience why if we both take survivor benefits, how do we get great enjoyment out of that? You know, I've been itching to jump in and say this. So survivor benefits, uh, dual federal employees or federal and military, how many times over the years have we heard if we both take it, it's going to be 10% for a husband to take survivor benefits, 10% for wife, are we really giving up 20% of our income? And the answer is, well, no, you're not giving up 20%, you're giving up 10%. Uh, Right, it's if I have a fifty thousand retirement, John has a fifty thousand retirement, and we turn those into forty five thousand dollar retirements. It costs us ten percent of a hundred grand. Right? It's not cumulative. It's, it's not just cumulative. Ten percent. So here's here's another point, and then I'm going to answer that question. Uh, one of our favorite statements, Tommy, is, uh, and you did the need. Maybe you don't need to, but if you can't live and thrive on ninety percent of your combined pay, you reduced it by 10, then how is that surviving spouse going to thrive on 50%? So just an example, both FERS employees have a $50,000 retirement, both FERS employees have 40,000 of social security. It's a reasonable assumption. Now, so each, each retiree is gonna have 90,000 of retirement, together that's a buck 80. You turn down survivor benefits, Uncle Sam turned down Social Security for you. 180 goes to 90. Really, is that 10,000 after tax, seven grand? Is that really going to affect your retirement and your enjoyment more than a $90,000 cut and pay? The, the answer is no. Right. right. And, and if, you, if you don't mind, I'd love to hear the answer to the question I asked you, which is, you know, when... I'm like a politician, you know, <laughs> I answer the questions I want to answer. Right. So here's, here's how. I don't think we're on every, like a debate stage yeah. where you just got to pick and choose. <laughs> every, everything, everything goes so much smoother. Here's, here's how. Once you have survivor benefits, you're not asking for TSP to be your life insurance. You're asking for TSP to be your fund money. You know, you're not worried... You're not worried when the market in 2020 is down 20% because your pay just went up, you know, 7%. So it just makes every, it takes a monkey off your back. You know, I guarantee you, you retire. This is what happened to me on an airline or airplane going to see my, my little brother get married the first time. That was a disaster. That's an entirely other story. But we're on this airplane and I just got a half a million dollars of life insurance approved and the airplane drops like 500 feet in a second. And after my wife and my sister spilled their drinks on me instead of themselves, you know, the first thought was, you know, I'm sure glad I have that life insurance in place. And there will be many of those thoughts through your, your retirement years when you have it in place. You're going to enjoy your retirement infinitely more. Everything will be more fun knowing that your surviving spouse is going to thrive in any possible situation rather than just survive. Maybe we just add one more interesting fact about SPP and like it, there's a pop-up feature. Oh yeah, it's awesome. So, you know, again, we'll just say two people are married and you're both paying for survivor benefits and one of you dies day one in retirement. Well, the surviving spouse does not have to pay for survivor benefits anymore if the person they're protecting dies first. So for dual federal employees, 
one of you is going to die first and the other person's pension will get popped back up to the full amount like they never took SVP to begin with. Of course, there's no refunded premiums. That's okay. We're not going to miss those over, over your lifetime, but um, that's different than two people retiring from hunting singles. That's they a make lifetime their survivor benefit decision. You get no pop back up for it changed, right? This was, that was the insurance decision made at that moment. Um, so I'm not aware of pop up available anywhere outside of government pension plans. Right. So, and if you were to compare that to two people retiring from a private sector pension, Tommy, now all of a sudden our team, Mason and associates looking at this family, Maybe we don't encourage both people to take survivor benefits on their pension from Huntington Ingalls. Maybe, maybe we're looking at a life insurance policy or maybe we're looking at something different in that scenario because they don't have the pop-up. But it's really easy to recommend two survivor benefits when you know one person's getting stepped back it brings up. brings us back to the point we've all made, which is uh, working with an advisor who specializes in federal and knows it, right? Because they could be working, maybe it's somebody who specializes with just Huntington Ingalls and they don't understand how the federal system differs from what they know. Um, so work with somebody who knows your system or at least has you know, the motivation to learn the system if they're going to work with you. Yeah, I think uh, I've, from my end, I think I've hit everything I wanted to cover or anything else on dual. Well, Mike, I think uh, another interesting fact or scenario to, for us to maybe share with the audience there is how would it work if we have um, self plus one and we're going in, in into retirement, we're in retirement right now. How could that situation, what are some interesting um, nuances there? Yeah, it's, it's, it's frustrating because OPM doesn't tell you this. So let's say uh, your, your last child just left the house, you're both retired, you were family or you were self plus one, however you got there, uh, we know that self-self is cheaper. Uh, so you could spend all year in a self plus one environment thinking that at open season, you'll just fix this. Can't fix it at open season. Uh, and it's a, it's a three to five month fix when you're retired uh, because you just have to contact OPM and say, I need to switch to self-self. And everyone we've had do that, it's taken multiple phone calls, three to six months. You, you get refunded the excess premiums, uh, but just don't wait till an open season. As soon as you know you only need self-self and you both uh, have earned the right to have the government subsidize your health insurance, you need to contact OPM and get it changed. I love it. Guys, who knew? About 27 minutes in, we thought this was going to be on, on the shorter end, but another great episode, Federal Employee Financial Planning Podcast, Dual Federal Employees. Thank you to our audience. Thank you to the co-host. A um, couple of final thoughts here as we close this down. We'd love to hear from you. Mason FP at MasonLLC.net. That's Mason FP, like financial planning, at MasonLLC.net. Um, if you haven't already, please leave us five stars. Please leave any comments or reviews. We want to continue to get better for you. That's why we're doing this, um, not only to, to meet new clients and connect, but we want to provide great information. And we can't do that without hearing from you and connecting with our audience. Don't miss our YouTube channel. Uh, masonllc.net under our blog post. We're posting those new videos and, and we plan to release a lot of them in the coming week. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you hit the notification so that you're aware of those future updates. Thanks again for being with us and we'll see you next time on the Federal Employee Financial Planning Podcast. You rest easy once your plan's done You will see clear the topics discussed on this podcast represent our best understanding of federal benefits and are for informational and educational purposes only and should not be construed as investment, financial planning, or other professional advice. We encourage you to consult with the Office of Personnel Management and one or more professional advisors before taking any action based on the information presented.